Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me. I'm, uh, my name is Saskia de Jong. I'm the Director of Sales of the Americas, and I'm going to put a spotlight on the U.S. market. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at some Avano data. Um, we'll take a look at some different trends that we're seeing. We're going to take a look at some popular aircraft that we see in our system, some popular routes, some pricing, and then finally, I'll give a quick summary on the presentation that Perry did yesterday on technology. Uh, so let's get started. Also, if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to, uh, to come and find me and I'm happy to answer them. So the first thing that I want to share with you is a couple of numbers. And the reason for sharing this is I want to share with you the reach and the depth that Avanode has in the charter market. We believe that our members touch upon 60% of all the charter in the world globally. So take a look at what we see right here. We received 7 million requests over the last 12 months globally. Of those, 1.8 million requests came from U.S. buyers sending requests to U.S. operators. That translates into about 5,000 requests on a daily basis, um, coming from 214 broker companies. And in total, we have about 650 broker companies in our system. If we make the same comparison in the, US, of, uh, in the operator segment, we see that about half of those are U.S. operators. So out of the 780 operators we have, 384 are representing the U.S. This is not strange that on the airport level, the majority of content is made up by U.S. content. So 60% of the aircraft are based in the United States. So quick uh, overview on searches. The purple line indicates the U.S. market. The blue line is the global market. So you can see that there's definitely an increase uh, since the moment we started. I'm not going to go into much detail here. I do want to uh, spend a little bit more time at the following graph showing the U.S. growth when it comes to requests. So this is year over year data. So the first um, overview that we see right here, October, is October 2016 comparing October 2017. So it looks like we have a steady growth uh, in the number of requests floating through our system. And again, this is U.S. buyers requesting U.S. Um, operators. The only thing that we see right here is September. Seems a little off. Anyone, an idea why September seems to be off? Derek, I'm going to point out. Give me an answer. <laughs> you were getting married. So that, that is, could, be, could be the reason. Well, the other reason might be that Irma hit in 2017. So we had an enormous amount of traffic going through our system in September 2017, hence only a 5% increase for 2018. Um, then we take a look at the number of requests per tail per day in the U.S. market. So on average, as you can see, we've steadily grow the number of requests that our operators receive. You see that same spike that I was just telling you about, about Irma, uh, happened in Q3 of last year. We see a little dip in June of this year um, that actually goes in hand with the feedback that we have received from our operators, saying that business uh, was a little slow. And then the last dip you see right here, well, this is not a real uh, fair dip. I mean, October hasn't finished yet. So part of that is caused by October not being a full month. But if you have read some of the news coming out during MBAA, uh, it shows that the uh, overall charter market is down with 5%. So that could indicate that little drop there as well. Um, then we have been growing our U.S. market since 2006. That's when one of the founders, Nicholas, went to the, uh, went to the United States, opened up the office in Miami, and we've been growing the U.S. market since. So where are the majority of our members? California, Florida, New York. Nothing shocking right here. Texas is actually quite a big market for us. Then we have the Northeast, we have the Midwest area, followed by Colorado and Arizona. The only state where we do not have members is Alaska. So if you are that Alaska operator or broker, or you know that Alaska operator or broker, please come see me or, or my team. We'd love to get you on board. Then a little Ryder Cup. I don't know if any one of you guys is familiar with the Ryder Cup. 
Uh, but it's that famous golf tournament between the U.S. and the American team. So I wanted to do a little Ryder Cup right here because there's always a little bit of competition, friendly competition, I would say. Um, so let's take a look at the number of requests that are being responded to. And often we hear from buyers in the U.S. that they feel that the U.S. operator does not respond to the request as well as the U.S. of the EU operator does. So let's take a look if that actually is true. 81%. So 81% of the time, the operator in the U.S. gets back to a request from Avanote versus 90 in the EU. So I would say there is a very small difference here. Talking about response time, how long does it take for them to get back to us or to you as a broker? Well, we have said that we would recommend that you would get back to a request within 45 minutes. So how often does a U.S. operator get back to a operator or to a request in 45 minutes or better? 46%. So that's a little low. Um, the EU does do a little bit of a better job. Then price discrepancy. It's not a lot of price discrepancy between the EU and the U.S. What are we comparing right here? How big are the markets? And I've already pointed out, in the US, we have 2,028 aircraft. If we compare this with EU, there is a drastic change. There is 1,028. And this number can change. I don't know if there's any operators here in the audience, but if you add an aircraft right now, I would love to see that number grow to, uh, to 2030, if even more. Then another thing that I looked at is the statistics of usage. I wanted to make sure that we could compare how many users are actually using desktop versus using our mobile app. And I don't know if any of the users out here actually have downloaded the app. If you have not, make sure you download our mobile app, the Marketplace app. But let's take a look. Is the US market different from the usage in the EU market? So it turns out that 56.4% of the users in the US uses desktop versus 30 36.2% in Europe. Then on the mobile sites, anyone to guess? What do you think, higher or lower than 56% in the higher? 34.7. What do you think in the EU? Higher, lower, higher? It actually is a lot higher, 52.6%, which I thought was interesting. Um, something that I did not point out here is that if I look at the US usage of the app, this is mostly used for ASAP requests. So as soon as it's a request within 72 hours, that app usage in the US goes up. So we are on our phones, we just use it mainly for the ASAP request. I wanna talk a little bit about trends. And this is something that uh, both Pear and Harry touched upon yesterday. Um, but one of the trends that I wanted to talk about is that 72 hour booking. Uh, we've been hearing a lot more about this. Maybe it's the millennials. I mean, we know millennials are on their phone more. We know that they look up charter on their phone. They look up charter rates. So is this why we see an increase? Ooh, sorry. Why we see an increase on that 72 hour booking. As you can see, one third of the requests from the US market are done within that 72 hour frame. It is something that we're looking at, uh, looking at. We actually have a feature coming out called Takeoff Ready that is focused on that 72 hour booking window, making our search results better, more reliable. If you have any questions about that Takeoff Ready project, come see uh, Ashley, our key account manager is here. We have Sarah walking around as well. Our product owners, Nana, will be happy to share our thoughts with you on that. So what is popular? Um, I wanted to take a look at the popular routes. Nothing shocking right here, right? We all know in the US that these are the most popular routes. We do see seasonal, that Aspen plays a pretty big role in our system, as well as Palm Beach. Um, Price-wise, the one thing that we did look at is the pricing between uh, Teterboro and Miami. And it looks like even though demand is increasing, it seems like we still have plenty of supply because pricing seems to be pretty flat. So there's not a lot of fluctuation on pricing for the north-south flight that we see right there. Now, let's take a look at some other pricing information. So the first route I want to point out is Van Nuys to Teterboro on a heavy jet. 
And what we did right here is the solid line that you see is the median. The dotted line is the 10 and 90 percentile for this trip. And the price you see right here is the response price. It's the price that the operator gets back to you about. So it's not the Avanote calculated price, but it's the actual response price. So what you see right here is a pretty big gap between the medium and the 90 percentile. And how come? I mean, this is an interesting thing to look at. Is it operators that do not know how to price or are certain operators much more confident in their pricing than others? Or is it other, maybe operators are more confident in getting an empty leg and therefore pricing it a lot lower? It's an interesting, to look at, an, an interesting thing to look at, I think. Now, looking at a one-way trip going from Van Nuys to uh, Las Vegas, you see it's a lot closer. Median and the 10 and 90 percentiles are a lot closer, but we've looked at this for the last 20 months and you do see a slight increase of about $1,000 for that trip over time. So pricing is going up on this route. So I think that that's something what operators um, need to take a look at. What are the pricing decisions you need to make? Let's talk about some aircraft models. So these are the most requested aircraft models in our system. So we looked at dates from January onwards. And as you can see right here, there's a, quite a few aircraft in here that are older. In fact, in the US, in our marketplace, the average age of aircraft is 17 years. If we compare that with our friends in Europe, it's 11 years. In the Middle East, the average age of aircraft is eight years. So there's quite a big difference. I don't know if you guys are all up to date on the avionics update uh, that's coming, and I have to take a look here. It's the ADSB. This will probably change next year if I'm standing here again. I mean, the Learjet 35A, the average value might be a million dollars less. How many of the owners are going to want to make that update? Uh, Maybe not a lot. So that's something to look at. I think this list will change in the, in the next 12 months. Then lastly, technology trends. We pretty much receive a phone call every month from an entrepreneur, a broker, an operator who wants to start the Uber of private jets. Well, how realistic is it to start the Uber of private jets? Well, I think there's a couple of challenges that we see. The first thing is the supply challenge. We do not have an adjacent pool of aircraft. In fact, we have a pilot shortage. That's one thing. We also have an owner problem. We need to get owner approval. Uh, imagine that we need to get owner approval from an Oprah Winfrey or any other famous person. That takes time. Then we have customer preferences. If I would request an Uber today that would be a BMW X5, uh, cognac interior, blue exterior with this specific sparkling water that I like, that might need to come from Miami. That might be four hours away. With other words, a private jet traveler is a lot more specific on their experience. They would want to have champagne, the chocolate strawberry, co uh, chocolate covered strawberries, a lot more specific. Lastly, regulatory challenges. We have uh, cabotage permissions. We have DOT and FAA rules and regulations. All of this makes the Uber of private jets a lot more challenging. Well, what do we do see? We do feel that there is an uptick of interest on making your back end better. What does that mean? Making sure you have the right operation system your right sales and management system. Um, if you are looking, make sure you take a look at our product, Scadero, as well as Trip Manager. Another trend that we see is APIs, digitalization. No one, underst everyone understands that nowadays there is not that one system out there that has everything. More than that, it is important to connect through APIs. So make sure that you use the APIs to connect your back end or your front end. And Avanote has those APIs as well, both on the Avanote side, the Skidero side, as well as Paynote. So come talk to us.
on the technology side, we are happy to help you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much.